Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. I'm Chris Bailey with C Bailey Film and we're gonna be making a little droid. Let's jump into it. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. Um, it really helps a lot in helping the channel grow. Um, and check out the Patreon. We've got a lot of cool stuff over there if you haven't checked that out already and the Blender Market too. We've got the Particle City series and um, procedural sci-fi up on there with a lot of extra assets and all the content ad free. So it's worth checking out. I'm just gonna make a droid. So what I'm thinking is it'd be fun is if we did something that's sort of like um, a combination of like all the little Star Wars droids like R2-D2 and BB-8 and that kind of a look. Do something like in that vibe, like that kind of cutesy tiny robot thing. I'm gonna start with a cube. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a subdivision surface modifier and I'm gonna crank it up to maybe three subdivisions, okay? And then I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna click apply. And so that's going to apply that modifier. So now this is just straight up geometry, okay? Now what I can do is I can enter edit mode with tab, make sure everything's selected. If it's not, you can hit A to select all. And then what I wanna do is I wanna hit F3 and type in two sphere. And this is a great little trick. I'll just drag your mouse out, keep dragging it, keep dragging it until it stops. Basically what it does is it spherizes, it tries to turn whatever vertices you have into a sphere as best as it can. And because we've got enough, um, you know, vertices and stuff, enough faces, it's able to really smooth this thing out and turn it into a pretty good sphere for us. Now if I shade smooth, you can see it's a circle that, uh, that works pretty well. What the advantage of this over a normal circle is if I go mesh UV sphere and grab this in the Y, you can see that the mesh of the UV sphere comes to this point and that can cause a lot of problems. Like if I, if I put a subdivision surface on this guy and crank it up and come in here, um, you're gonna see, I don't know if you can see that, you may not be able to in this, um, but we're getting a lot of like, it's like a pinched vertex is what that's called. It's a lot of like, you know, bits that kind of all collide. So, um, all right, so let's look at this thing head on. Whenever you're modeling, it's really useful to use your number keypad. If you've got a number keypad, and hit in uh, the number one, number three, number seven. You're kind of popping around and this gives you like a perfect um, flat view. So a isometric view of your scene. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, basically perspective view is this. So things get smaller as they go into the distance. So you can see that red line and the grid lines, they all converge. Whereas orthographic, nothing gets smaller. Things stay the same no matter how far away they get. So it looks very flat. So that's just a great way to, you know, evenly model stuff. Now, the other thing that's really important when you're modeling is you wanna make sure you're turning this on. This is the uh, transparent or toggle x-ray. So if I was to grab, uh, use my B to box select and then grab some vertices here, without it turned on, you can see it's just grabbed vertices on one side of the sphere, not both sides. So if I come over here and turn it back on and I grab that, now I've actually grabbed everything that's on the underneath side. So that's just really important to note. If you wanna be controlling or grabbing vertices on both sides of an object, um, you need to make sure you've got X-ray turned on so you can do that. All right, let's delete the vertices. So now we have a nice half circle. All right, I'm gonna hold down Alt and actually I'm gonna grab these guys. We're gonna grab this here. And I'm going to, because we've, we've made this with a perfect cube, I'm pretty sure we can grid fill this. So let's go grid fill and see if it works. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. So grid fill is a great little tool. If you've got an even number of faces or edges, it can create a gig, a great grid out of that. So, all right, I'm gonna create a loop cut. Uh, just, oh, no, I'm not. That's ugly. What happened there? That's just really gross. We have something funny going on. Oh, I see. Okay, so loop, cupping, loop, cu loop cutting works well, uh, but not when we've got um, confused faces like that. So actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this. There we go. I'm gonna loop cut first. You can see now that loop cut, it's giving me like a clear circle here. Um, just bring it up a touch. Um, all right, let's, let's keep mapping this out. I'm gonna hit E, uh, I'm gonna scroll down. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just make some legs for this guy, some simple little uh, leg things. Uh, so let's see, let's switch it on the Y90. I'm thinking what we could do is um, something like this, and around like this. Scale X, X like that. Make these like little gear things, or not gears, but like just little, you know, cylindrical things. All right, so then let's E again to extrude, bring that in, and then hit E and bring it out. So we're just making like a little kind of thing, you know, like a little, uh, 
bolt thing um, like that. And then um, what we could do actually is we could take this across to here. Now, if you have this little side menu, there's a lot of great uh, little tools in here. Um, and if I go to vertex mode, I'll just make sure those are the only vertexes I've got selected. Um, what you can do is you can you can move, you can basically set something to zero. So if I hit, um, actually, what's, anyway, so I can grab one of these guys and I can use this little dropout box to go, okay, I want this right on the zero point on the Y, uh, or on the X axis. So I can hit zero and um, zero, no, is it this one? Oh, let's <laughs> look, look, okay. Let's see these two things, global, local, okay. That's what I thought we were on. That's why. That's why you know that wasn't working for me. I really do have my stuff together, guys. I'm, I'm a professional. All right. All right. So let's go over a modifier for this guy, and we're going to create a mirror modifier, and we're going to go along the. There it is. All right. So now, because we've moved off, um, all we got to do here is uh, to get this to work properly. It's because I, I I made this thing, and it's not actually centered. I'll just show you. Um, if I put that like that and then go into edit mode and then grab it on the x-axis and bring it. It's because the mirror modifier is always based on that center point. Um, and then I can just take these guys again and then make sure they are zeroed out on the x. And now it's going to work out with it. There we go. Two little things for a little droid. And then uh, let's create some like simple kind of back, you know, facing uh, legs. So like uh, like this, we'll grab a cube, take it down, scale Z, like this, Z, grab it on the Y, scale it on the X, up there, grab it here. And uh, let's, uh, let's rotate on the X. I'm gonna go like this, grab it on the Y, bring it back. Um, I'm not going to set this thing up for animation, so I'm just going to kind of model it in a pose. As opposed to like worrying about it being in a T pose or something like that. And then what we can do is we can take this, just add a little bit of detail, grab one of these faces, hit E, scale it down, E, grab it in like that, E, scale, um, and then let's switch to local, let's scale on the Y, I can use the handles. Make it a bit easier, hit E again, grab this out, E, uh, scale, and grab it out like that. All right, so you can see it just gives us a little bit of interest. I mean, we could we could go even further with this and control R to loop cut, and then like roll our mouse to make an extra loop cut, and then what, uh, I don't know, control B to bevel, why not? And then hit E to extrude, and then just scale it up. Like we're just going random now, look at that. Scale X. That's the fun part about like anime or modeling like robots and stuff and sci-fi things. It just doesn't have to make any sense whatsoever. Uh, I feel like this would look cool if it had, um, let's see, I'm gonna grab this face right here and just push that down. That's nice. Um, and then, um, yeah, we could have a similar joint to this. So we could shift D, grab it on the Z, whoop. Local, go back to Google, grab it on the Z, grab it on the Y, line it up like this. For this one, we won't need the uh, the center bit. So go back here. All right, I'll delete these vertices. And uh, you can see that mirror modifier is still working for us. No, it's not connected. Um, in fact, we could just, uh, it's got nice with it intersecting there, isn't it? We could um, We could just use a mirror modifier for this one too. Come over here, go for the mirror, and go like that. And put it back in the zero position of the X. Go into edit mode, select all, grab X, and bring it out. And then let's figure out, can I not figure this out? There we go. Feels like it shouldn't be that confusing. Anyway, so we got, we got two legs. And now what we can do is we can just shift D, duplicate, grab this on the Z, rotate on the X like that. And these guys should be a little different probably. So let's um, let's see, I'm gonna go local 
and we're going to turn on transparent and I'll just grab these bottom ones here and I'll just drag, I'll go to proportional editing and I'll grab them on the Z and with proportional editing on, it's going to kind of proportionally push all of those up. So we could either extend this or we could shrink it. I think shrinking it is going to look good. Turn that off and then bring these guys back down. Um, that looks pretty good. Turn proportional editing off. I don't know. What do you guys think? You liking it? All right, now we need to put, now we need to do some kind of like foot thing. So for the foot, um, I'm thinking it'd be cool to have like this kind of like arced, arced foot. So what is going to be the best way to do that? Can we just use something like this? What does the mesh look like on this? Yeah. Yeah, this could work. Let's reuse our mesh. So I'm going to click that top vertex, control plus to expand my selection until I get that whole top. And then I hit Shift D, that duplicates it, right? So I've got a separate piece now. And then I'm gonna hit P, and that brings up the separate menu. If you don't know, you can't remember the hotkey for that, you can just hit F3 as usual and just type in separate. Um, and we wanna separate by selection. So what that does is it creates a different object. So if I get out of edit mode now, I have two objects here. Um, got snapping turn on. That's why it's moving money. That's the same. So you just saved, uh, reuse those, you know, faces. So anyway, so I'm just gonna use uh, proportional editing, roll my mouse wheel to drag out. And I'm just kind of creating this, this shape thing. And then I think what I want to do, do I want to do this? I think I want to do this. I want to go like that, go like that, delete faces. And then I want to Wait, did I want to delete faces? I don't think I want to delete faces. I want to extrude and then turn off portion editing and scale. Now I'm also going to get rid of this subdivision surface modifier. Um, and I want to hit E again, and I'm going to grab on the Z and then I'm going to scale on the Z. So I'm going to scale to zero and that flatten out all this stuff. So S Z zero and that flattens it just like so. Um, and then I can bring this up a touch. I don't think I, think I want to keep it actually. I think I'll get rid of these faces. So I'll just bring this down a bit and then I will, eh, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Maybe we'll keep it. All right, I'm going to do a loop cut. So control R just to tighten up that edge. Same here, same here. So that's universal across everything in Blender. Holding shift slows down the rate at which you change the value. Very, very handy tip. Maybe I do want to delete these. All right, so I'm going to create a little bit extra detail on this foot. I could grab these guys and that guy, and let's hit E, extrude, and just scale them E again. So that double extrude, it's creating basically like an, a little edge loop for me. So it just helps firm it up because I'm using the subdivision surface modifier. Bring that up here, the shift D, grab that on the Y, bring the X and bring it over. So you have two little feet for a cute little robot. Now the size of the feet really, really, really do determine the cuteness. So bear that in mind. Eh, what do you think? I think that looks pretty good. We can give him little toes. Could shift D, drag that forward, scale that one down. Maybe like a double foot thing could be fun. You know, like a jointed foot. <laughs> That's kind of fun. All right, let's get a little eye on this thing. Um, so I want to go with the classic kind of Star Wars, you know, single eye cuteness. All right, let's get this. Uh, let's get this eye thing going. So cylinder, rotate on the X, scale it down. Uh, probably. Hmm. Yeah, let's have him look straight. I think that's a good idea. So our X rotation, we'll just make that straight up. 90 degrees and I will I'm gonna shade smooth and we're really feeling like those pit droid bot things from whatever Star Wars that was. I lose track. There's way too many Star Wars now. I'm pretty excited for uh, the new season of Mandalorian. I think that looks good. 
I am pumped for that. Now I'm gonna put a sphere, I think, for like his little eye. So a really great way to make sure it's positioned correctly is uh, go into edit mode and I'm gonna select this face. And then what I can do is I can hit Shift S and I can go cursor to select it. If you don't remember the Shift S hotkey, remember you can always just hit F3 and type that in here. Um, that's the way to do it. So now the cursor's right there. So when I hit Shift A um, to make something, it's gonna show up exactly where this cursor is. So I go at it in edit mode, Shift A, mesh, UV sphere, it's gonna appear right where I want it. I can just shade smooth there. Funny secret though about me is um, I don't actually watch a lot of movies and TV, which might sound strange, um, but I actually read a lot of books. It's my, that's what I have the most fun with. Well, and video games, guilty pleasure. But I was born in the eighties, you know, can't help it. All right, now I wanna scale all these, but I don't wanna scale them in towards the center. I wanna scale them right where they are. So uh, all I was gonna do is bring that in like that. And then I was gonna hit I to inset. Yeah, I to inset, that's pretty much the same thing. Insetting is basically extruding, but it stay, it's the same as if you hit extrude and then hit scale and scale it in. So inset kind of just saves, saves you some time. So guy, we could do some like little things, maybe like this. Do I want to do this? I don't know if I want to do this. It might just mess us up. You know, Cause like last time we got messed up. Now that's kind of cool. I'll put a little, like another little sensor in this one. Um, so shift S cursor to selected out of edit mode and then um, shift A mesh. Scale it down. Scale it up. I'm just kind of eyeing this stuff up, not being very exact with it. But those little details, you know, they can they can do a lot for you. So uh, let's go ahead and give this guy. Let's go uh, do some ground for him to stand on. And let's go ahead and get our camera. Lock our camera to view. And let's find a nice angle for this little guy. Like this, maybe. And go ahead, you know, why not? Cinematic camera, always. Just like my camera, I'm gonna pop out to maybe a 24. Nah, kind of lose a sense of his cuteness, I think. We need to look down on him, I think. Let's, let's pose him a little bit. I'm gonna grab these things, all of these things. And then I'm gonna control click, and I'll shift click the last, the main object, and then control P, parent. Um, yeah, cool. Draw it head. Jump back into our camera. I can now rotate this on the Z a little bit, have him look towards us. And um, I'm gonna just pose him a little bit, I think. Um, I'll need to apply, I'm gonna apply these, uh, these uh, modifiers. The mirror modifiers and oops that way i can mess with these things independently let's, let's go back in here and we'll just grab this foot leg and oops that leg still all right yeah because so what we also have to do is um select all and then p separate by selection and do that here too P separate by selection and then grab these guys and then P separate by selection. I could set the origin of each of these objects, uh, origin to geometry first, right? And that will, um, I'll leave that one there. And then I can like parent these. So I can, I can go like this, control P, and then I can click on this one and click on this piece, control P. And then I can parent this piece to this piece. And then I can parent this piece to this piece. And then this piece can be parented to this piece. So now if I take this 
for example, the leg and we rotate on the X, it's going to rotate the whole thing. Now, it's not all, it's not in the correct spot, naturally. Um, I mean, I could do that. I could, you could come here, right? And just, and just select like the center uh, face. Um, oh, how do we do it? We could just select um, like this, grab these guys. And then I could go Shift S cursor to selected. That'll put my cursor kind of roughly in the middle. And then I could go to here and I could go Object Set Origin to 3D Cursor. And now if I rotate on the X, it's actually going to rotate on that joint. Um, so okay, back to just a little pose. Um, I'll rotate on the X a little bit, and I'll bring this one. Uh, I'll just hit Shift S uh, cursor to selected and then object set origin uh, origin to 3D cursor. So now I can rotate this. Now, one thing I'm thinking is um, I'm going to take this Shift D rotate on the X 180 and then I'm going to pull it out like that just to have a, a joint on both sides. Um, I could also probably do this as well. I wonder if that would look good too. Yeah, so this that's gonna look better because then we've got interest on both sides. All right, now let's uh, let's talk about how we could make this thing now look really nice as a render. So um, I'm gonna pop now into Eevee, and uh, I'm going to grab the body, and we're gonna create a new shader, and I'm going to get my light. And what do we have? We've got just a, just a point light. I'm going to delete that light. I'm going to add a sun lamp and just rotate it around a little bit like this. Just for now, I might turn up the, the angles so we get more of a soft shadow. And I might create one more. Switch to global, rotate it on the Z, bring it around to the other side like this, just to kind of fill him out. And this one, I'll bring the angle right down. So it's a hard shadow and I might pop it a little bit like that. So now we got this nice kind of rim light on him. And then we've got our main light. We could probably even use one more just around this side. I don't want to have too many, too many lights. I, I usually never go past three. What I'm going to do is just real simple. I'm going to create two Veroni nodes, one of my favorite little texture node combos. And we're going to shift D that. And I'm going to take my distance, pipe it into the vector. And then I'm going to create a color ramp. And we're going to stick that, uh, the distance of the factor. And then I'll put this into the base color. And then I'm going to switch this from Euclidean to Manhattan. And then I'm gonna take my randomness on, and now I'll just take my scale. I'll go ahead and get a texture coordinate node and a mapping node, and I'll take the object. We'll try object first, pop that in. Let's try chip chip, chip chip. That's the one you want. That gives the right look, at least the look I was thinking about. All right, now let's think about what colors we want for this guy. Um, I like the kind of gray droid look. I don't wanna go black, maybe a bit of a yellow droid. Um, could look nice and yellow and white maybe what if we make this constant and drag this out this will give us definitive kind of points like so we could probably add in another color that looks nice I might try um yeah these colors are definitely not right I might keep it like that for now let's keep going so next up we need to have, um, well, this will be easy. Let's, let's add a kind of just a, a dark reflective material for this. So I'm gonna make this black and I'm gonna take my roughness and turn it right down. I don't wanna go all the way to zero. So with roughness, it's good not to go all the way to zero because um, it just helps with your realism. I'll turn my specular up as well. And just make sure we've got screen space reflections turned off. And I'm gonna turn off our selectors so we can actually see. I'll take that one. And I'll assign the same material to that, although that's kind of creepy looking now. So maybe I want to make this a new material. Oops, not that one. Uh, this one. Make that a new material, and instead of black, maybe this one should have some color to it. 
And this is where we need to start thinking about our colors and how they all work together. So you can see I'm automatically kind of going towards this like teal. And that's because that's opposite to the orange that I've got here. Um, and that's how you can get nice color schemes that work together. Um, maybe we'll do like a, a power button, like a red and blue power button thing. So let's, uh, we'll make this red and give it a bit of a mission. Like that, and then lower its roughness down so it gets a bit of a glint. And I'll do the same for this one. I'll just grab that material we just made, click that little two paper icon to make it a new material and change the colors to green. Um, now see the green doesn't really work. So maybe we wanna go for blue to kind of match. Now let's grab this lens bit and we need to kind of get what's the metal you know, for this guy going to look like. Um, so let's just create like a darker thing. We're going to, I'll turn um, metallic up for this. I might also turn metallic up on this as well because um, that makes sense because it's, it's a metallic droid. Although the plastic kind of look is nice too though, isn't it? It's kind of nice, this sort of bronze look that he's got. I like it. All right, so back to this thing. Um, darken that up a bit, and I'll bring my roughness down a bit, and my specular up a bit. Um, and I'll just assign that material to these guys. Um, now, it does kind of break up. It doesn't make things as differentiated, so that, that eye is now quite dark, whereas these aren't. Um, so we might want to actually brighten this guy up a touch so that we can, so it stands out more. All right, let's see, let's just assign this to the rest of his, so the, the metallic, let's put it on his legs for now. May not look really any different than what we've already got. The joints, maybe we'll put the body material on the joints. See what that could look like. Body material, body material, and the feet as well. Oops. <laughs> what happens if the legs go with that body material too? Does that look cool? Yeah, I don't think so. I think the legs need their own their own business. So let's um make this. We'll do this these all together. So what I'll do is I'll so material.08 is what I want. So I'm shift selecting all those, going to material.08, and I'm going to click this and copy material to selected. So now they all have the dot zero eight on them. And we can play around with them directly. So I can just darken up those legs a bit. Um, and with this one, it might be nice actually. Let's grab let's grab our, our little system that we've built right here. And I'll copy this. All right, so let's go to these legs and find our material. We can paste that system in and get a color ramp and then uh, a bump node. Plug the distance into the factor, the color into the height, and then bump into the normal. And uh, what this is going to do for us, I'll turn the strength right down. Um, I will do generated. I think that's going to be a bit better. You can see it gives us these nice kind of geometric line things that make it look like we've got way more modeling detail than what we actually have. Um, so I can turn that up. That looks pretty nice. Now I'm reckoning, I think with this, the biggest problem is that we're using object. If I switch to generated, I think it might look a little bit better on the feet and stuff. And yeah, not really, I think we need a different material for, let's try this cool material on the joints. Yeah, that looks a bit better. And then what if the feet have the shiny, maybe? Well, they figured feet would be like really scuffed up, wouldn't they? All right, what if we do this? The feet, that looks 
Very cool. What happens if we put that on some of these? It's coming there. So you can see we're just kind of like massaging it in the right direction. Um, now this, this system, this color is not really working for me. So I'm going to find something else. Um, now that looks evil, you know, it's an empire droid. Let's change the scale. Uh, I'm going to grab a value node and just stick this value node into the scale factor. And what that's going to allow me to do is change the scale of all three of those numbers universally. So I can drag it down or drag it up. I can hold down shift to slow it down. And that will allow me to maybe find something that's a little less um, busy. You know, like something like that. Looks like an R2-D2 with his head cut off with like little robot legs. <laughs> Another thing that'd be really good to do is to kind of like create some, well, some, some patterns on this. So we could use this same system. Um, so if I actually, if I create another color ramp right down here, pipe the distance into the factor and then create a bump node, color into the height, and then pipe this into the normal and then tone it down. And then bring these in a bit. It'll give us again, just a little bit more definition. And what's nice is it'll line up with our texture. So now it feels really like there's a lot of modeling detail going on when we didn't actually model that much. So very nice. Okay, now let's really land this image. Um, now we talked about like, how do you do scuff marks? Um, the, uh, actually I wanna bring this one out. I think this, that's annoying me that that's, there we go. So what I can do is I can select these vertices, we hit control plus to expand that selection by one turn on my transparent view and I'm going to get rid of these top ones by using B to box left select and then holding down shift and just deselecting these top ones. So now I just have these two rings selected and I can go here to vertex paint mode, click on vertex and I've got them selected, right? So if I come over here and I'm going to switch to flat shaded mode um, and I go to my tool, and let's see, I'm gonna to switch to black as my color. And now I can paint these vertexes um, black. It's only gonna apply it to the ones I have selected, right? So I can just do this, all right? So now I've got all these, these vertexes painted. Now, if I come over to this little tab here, it's gonna, you see vertex colors. Is a drop down and it's, it's made this new group called COLs, but it's automatically named it. And that's this vertex group color, right? If I, if I come back over here now, go out of edit mode and go back into object mode, just hide everything. What I can do is I can select this material and I can bring in a um, vertex color node. Um, now what we can do is we can use this and say, grab this color ramp, for example, drag these out. And I'll pipe this into the emission so we can see it clearly. Now you can see that I've been able to bring those vertex colors into my shader, right? And so now I've got that edge. And I can use this as kind of a map. Um, so I could say, all right, you know what? I only want this white zone to have grunge on it. So, you know, I could change this to an ease, let's say, so it's even smoother. And then what I can do is I can grab a, uh, a noise or maybe a musgrave. Musgrave works really well for grunge. And then like a texture coordinate, grab the generated, bring that in here. And then what I can do is I can multiply. So I'm bringing a uh, mix RGB and bring the color of this one into here. And then uh, I'll grab another color ramp. So I've got more control, bring the height into, into the factor and then take the color into this color and then switch this to multiply, turn the factor all the way up now, if I bring this into the emission, and now I can bring my scale up, you can see I'm just getting this stuff here down at the bottom. Is I can increase my detail, draw up my dimension like this. And the lucernity I can bring up. And then instead of piping this into the emission, what we could do is um, we could use this with the, the roughness, for example. Um, that could be good. So anyways, now we got this thing that we can do is we can create like, so a color ramp, for example, where, so we've got a roughness of this number. 
So let's say we want this roughness to be, um, you know, the standard look for it all. So um, let me just have another look at this. So I would take this and pipe it into the black value. So to come here and I'll just paste into RGB that number into red, green, and blue. And then this one, let's say I don't want to have any roughness. I want it to be really, or I want it to be really rough. So I'm bringing all the way up, not to one because it's a bit much. So I'll just bring them down to like 0.9 maybe. And paste that into all those. So now I've got these like two values and I can pipe this in and it's going to scale between those two, va two values. So now if I pipe this in, we get the same roughness we had before up here. I'm oh, sorry, get rid of the emission. Same roughness we had before up here, but down here it's, it's going to lose some of its roughness. So you get that, that kind of dullness as well. Um, and then what we can do is you could also like add a bit of dirt, uh, you know, a bit of a dirt texture to that, uh, to a color, you know, to kind of like fade off our color a little bit. Um, and now I can like play with this as well to kind of ease it in, fade it through, make it look um, more natural. Now we can just go in and we can paint any kind of vertex we want. It's going to, and it's automatically add that in. So. If I go back now into um, edit mode for this guy, um, switch back over to here. And if I go into edit mode and let's say I select these vertexes right here, maybe those here, that one here, that, and then go to vertex paint and paint these guys. And they don't even have to like be fully dark. Like you can come in here and kind of like, ease these off a bit, you know, get a bit artistic with it. And now if I jump back into shading mode, you can see it's automatically added in that grunge. All right, um, let's uh, let's land this image. Let's bring it home. So um, we probably need to have uh, a little uh, friend. I think you're right. Um, and I think we need to have something on the floor here. So let's make the floor. I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to make it uh, really, really shiny. So bring down the roughness. And I'm gonna darken it. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to take this material and I'll get a musgrave. So we'll do the same thing we did with the grunge basically, but we'll just do it across the whole thing. Um, and I'll take this into a color ramp. Like so, bada bing, bada boom. And then send this into the roughness. Um, and then I just want to back off this one from one. I don't want it to be quite one. It's like that. And this one, I'll bring it up from zero because I don't want it to be quite zero. And then I can just increase the scale, bring up the, the that, bring that down. We could also take our camera and switch on depth of field. Boom. Select our little robot and then bring our f-stop right down. I mean, we could, eh, I mean, Rotate Y, 90, going on the X. Uh, uh, rotate X, grab it on X, no, Z. I mean, now we're just making a hallway because why not? You know, once you start, you might as well just go nuts. That's my policy. So here we are going nuts. If you guys are excited, Z, yeah, Z. And now I'm just going to bevel this a little bit. So it's just a little bit of a beveled edge. There you go. And then um, what we could do is take this, give it a material, bring the roughness down on the walls as well. And then bring up the metallic. Could look cool. I can right click on this now and select hierarchy, shift D. And then um, I can go global and just drag this one back. Grab it on the X, rotate it on the Z. That's nice. Now we've got two two levels. Um, just come over a little bit. Get our composition looking really nice. I hope you uh, learned a few really cool tricks with this one and uh, you enjoyed the process of putting these guys together and just kind of seeing how it all works and you know setting up a shot and. Um, 
a bit of modeling, a bit of texturing, and how far you can actually push things in Eevee. Um, I think it's really exciting, especially when you get things like uh, depth of field turned on. You know, it just really comes to life. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. See ya!